Cuyahoga County special meeting for Thursday, December the 20th, 2018. Clerk, please call the roll. Calling the roll, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones is absent at the moment. Ms. Brown? Here. Ms. Stevens? Ms. Stevens is absent today. <laughs> Ms. Simon? Here. Ms. Baker? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Tuma? Here. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Schron? Mr. Schron is absent at the moment. Ms. Conwell? Present. And Council President Brady? I'm here. You have a quorum. All righty. Any public comment? Yes, Mr. President. Ms. Liu? Good morning. Well, uh, I'm glad it's uh, kind of a good year we survived collectively, uh, the 2018. The bright 2019 is coming upon us. But still, I would like to explain a couple of things which I addressed last time. For all of you sitting here, you may know, but for lots of people later they watch the video, they may not understand. The so-called homeless shelter right now is not exactly the homeless shelter uh, general public have in mind, especially the one on 222 uh, 7 Payne Avenue. Basically, this is, is a psych ward outside of a psychiatric facilities and a nursing home for the people who cannot afford to go to the real nursing homes or any hospital or, or for long-term care. And that situation actually is even more than that, worse than that. Last time I mentioned about the search, we are still searching. Uh, not searching for anything wonderful, we are searching for contrabands. However, since this place has lots of people, they had to endure multiple rapes in the past. They probably have been abused, not necessarily by the innocent victim others, it could be by actually their guardian parents or older siblings. So lots of people may have a permanent scars on their body. When you ask them to leave their pants up or to put their pants down to search them that way, sometimes they go off. Or when they see other people being searched this way, psychologically they cannot take it anymore. It triggered their trauma, horrible memories. And we have cutters all the time. They don't even need a box cutter to cut themselves. And I have witnessed the cutters just use their own nails to hurt themselves when they couldn't take it anymore in front of everybody in the lobby. Their blood was everywhere. And I have also witnessed the one cutter trying to help another cutter not to cut. So everybody's anxiety all went up. Please, move this facility into county jail so all the problems will be solved. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? No, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, like a motion to approve the minutes for December the 11th, Committee of the Whole, December the 11th, regular meeting, December the 13th, Committee of the Whole work session. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Legislation introduced by the executive, consideration of a resolution for first reading adoption under suspension of the rules. Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Moved and suspended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The um, rules have been suspended. Resolution number 2018-0267, amending the 2018-2019 biennial operating budget for 2018 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations for appropriation transfers and for cash transfers, amending various resolutions to reconcile appropriations for 2018. Move to that. Uh, second. Um, Councilman um, Miller has some comments to make, and then we're going to um, listen to... Um, uh, Mr. President and my colleagues, I'd like to uh, make a couple of comments and then, uh, then have uh, Trevor provide some additional detail. Uh, first, there, uh, there's a pretty significant item in which uh, 
in the original version a net of uh, of 19 million dollars in, in additional uh, appropriation for health and human services was requested and and I think in in the final version it's slightly less but still uh, not much different and uh, and I directed a question to OBM and, and asked whether this, uh, this meant that expenses for health and human services had exceeded expectations by that amount. And, and, uh, and the response that I got back was yes, and, and that, uh, that of that amount, uh, seven million of it was because of the uh, the higher caseloads in children in custody and amount of foster care required in, in DCFS. And so I just want to bring that to everybody's attention because I think it, uh, it has uh, serious implications as we're going to have to uh, think about sometime before the end of next year what what we're going to re request in the next uh, levy request. And so I think we're going to have to uh, take that into account. The other thing that I wanted to say is uh, that, uh, that OBM has uh, truly provided exemplary service and cooperation throughout the years for which we're grateful, and it, 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 it's just been, uh, been a pleasure to, to work with you. But uh, this, uh, the process on this last item uh, needs a little bit of work. The, uh, the original list of, of changes came in uh, pretty late, I think on, on Monday for the Thursday meeting, and then uh, and then a, sub, a subsequent substantial list of changes came in, and it came in in, in a for, format that was uh, difficult to analyze and hard to tell exactly where the changes were. And, and so, uh, so we're going to, as far as this year is concerned, we're just going to say it is what it is and deal with it. But I just point this out that uh, that in answer to a question, uh, it, it was said that we're going to need this, uh, this very late uh, meeting every year. And, and so uh, I think we just need to, uh, to hone the process a little bit so, so that we uh, get, get the material in a way that we're able to analyze it a little more effectively. And with that, I would like to... Uh, through the chair, uh, ask if uh, if uh, Mr. McAleer could provide us a little bit more information on the details of this resolution. Thank you. Good morning, Council President, Council Members, Trevor McAleer, Council Staff. Uh, before you today, you have the year in fiscal agenda. The uh, as Councilman Miller stated, majority of the items include year in uh, grant closeouts appropriation increases, uh, decreases, transfers to either cover uh, year-end deficits uh, in salary or benefits or to reduce surplus appropriations. Uh, we did send uh, a list of questions to OBM. They were satisfactorily answered um, by Director Keenan. Um, before you, though, you do have a proposed substitute that um, OBM had to make some uh, changes to the original resolution. Um, to ensure that they can close out the 2018 books. Uh, the proposed substitute includes about 10 or so additional uh, or, additional or decrease of appropriations um, to close out projected salary or benefit deficits for the final pay period um, or to uh, provide <coughs> enough funding for various grants. The departments include juvenile court, um, public safety and justice affairs, CESA, um, uh, Internet Crimes Against uh, Children uh, Task Force. Um, there are some other changes in the proposed substitute. I think they're fairly minor. Um, might be some uh, updates from the original resolution, just fine-tuning some final numbers to close out the year-end. Uh, Director Keaton is here to answer any additional questions, but I think overall the proposed substitute would be something um, that uh, is in line with the other items in the resolution that would be appropriate to move forward with. 
All right, do we have any questions of Mr. Macklin or Ms. Green? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, having Having made a motion on the main resolution, and it was seconded, so that's before us. But at this time, I would like to move that we accept the substitute version before voting on the final resolution. Second. Move to be seconded. All those in favor of voting on the proposed substitute, say aye. 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 No, the ayes have it. Any questions? Sure. Um, it was um, explained by Councilman Miller on the 19 million in the HHS, and seven of that was explained in children in foster care. But what is the other 12 million? Where are we? Where's the majority of that money going? And that's Director Keenan. Yes. That's a very good question. Thank you. Good morning, Maggie Keenan, Office of Budget Management. Um, the increase is almost exclusively advances, so they're not, there's a difference between a cash transfer that just will stay in the fund and then in advance. Okay. The increases will all be returned to the levy fund on the first, ag first or second agenda of next year. Mm -hmm. um, we are required by Ohio Revised Code to have sufficient resources in a fund to cover total appropriation, which includes contract balances, which is lovingly referred to as carryover. We had been anticipating all year in response to our request for agencies to reduce their encumbrances to only the amount that they need to cover expenses this year. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So that's part of why we had a last minute substitute. We had been pushing to have those numbers brought down so that we wouldn't have to advance so much out of the levy fund. But um, you know, at some point, which happened to be Monday morning, we just figured we can't wait anymore. We can't assume that there were gonna be any response to our requests and we had to comply with the law. So the majority of that money is a temporary transfer so that we can close the books, avoid any audit citations, maintain compliance with the Ohio Revised Code. But um, for all practical purposes, the projections have not changed substantially with the exception of the $7 million. We were unaware at third quarter that the Department of Ch Division of Children and Family Services was a little bit behind in the billing. There were contract amendments that the council had previously approved um, just in the last couple of weeks. We anticipated, based on conversations we had, that that was actually for part was for next year, but then we, it was communicated to us Friday evening that that was for this year's payment. So we had expected $7 million of payments and it's really gonna be 14. That's gonna go out the door this year in children and family, which is why we needed the extra seven. Okay. That is not gonna come back to the levy fund, or at least we don't expect that that would come back to the levy fund this year, or early next year. If the placement counts stay the same, we'll likely need some additional funding for the DCFS next year, depending on some of their other revenue sources. If they come down, that seven million will not stand for next year. Just as a follow-up, is there anything here on council we can do to get the answers back for you more quickly? Is there, would you suggest any policy or any anything that uh, on our end to make your life easier and maybe even not have today's meeting? Um, well, that's a two part question. Mm -hmm. So we are working on revising some policies and if, um, you know, I defer to the fiscal officer, but if he sees a need to involve counsel I would certainly appreciate any opportunity to make my life a little bit easier, so thank you for that. The end of the year meeting, I really don't see ever going away. Um, the alternative to having a meeting this late in the year, and actually this meeting is being held a little bit earlier than it has been in years past, which is also part of why we had the substitute, and I do recognize that's an annoyance, and I apologize for that. Um, but the alternative would be to over-appropriate in almost every fund, advance large amounts of cash in almost every fund just so that everything's covered. Mm -hmm. I generally would prefer not to do that. A, it involves a lot of transactions on the part of our staff um, to bring those advances back and to process everything. So just from a workload allocation, it's not preferable. That's just my opinion. But also I feel that it signals to agencies that at the end of the year, we're gonna stuff these accounts with cash and appropriation and essentially you're taking away some of the controls 
and the management on the budget to lock down their spending, get their vouchers in on time, get all their payments processed on time so we're not finding out um, December 20th that we have all these extra bills to pay. So all of this is policies and procedures that we can work on, but it's a nearly $2 billion operation. I, I really don't see how we don't have a meeting at the end of the year. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. Maggie, uh, I... Um, We've, this is the eighth time we've had one of these meetings, so I guess, you know, some of us are kind of used to it. Um, but I still have often wondered if, if we just didn't have one, if probably people could, could figure out how to work around it. Um, I've heard your explanation. It's an, right. it's an interesting one. It's compelling. Right. I, I understand that. But I, it, it also, you know, um, I, just, I just don't accept the idea that, that with all the king's horses and all the king's men, that, that there can't be a way to make this happen without one 15-minute meeting. I just can't accept that. So um, not, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, though. So I, I mean, in answer to your statement, I agree with you. I, if we were to change something, people would eventually fall into line. That's human nature, and people would have to deal with it. I think that first year would be rough, and um, people generally don't comply with things the first time around. And so my only concern would be that that first year we would have, if we didn't stuff all the accounts with appropriation and cash, which we can do, um, I have concerns about that, but that we might end up with audit citations. Okay, thank you. In terms of the $7 million, um, while I didn't hear that, uh, this first time I heard it was today, um, uh, I am very aware of the fact that during the budget process last year um, we uh, agreed uh, between the administration and the council that if there were, if if we were wrong and their needs were greater that we would be prepared to appropriate more funds um, so uh, here we are and that's exactly what we're doing yes I do want to point out that we are appropriating beyond the reserve it's about six million dollars beyond the reserve that we had in place but this is not coming as a surprise to anyone who, I mean, I give the custody counts every month in my update, and there has been a steady increase, 30% um, over this time last year. Okay. Any other questions? Do we, are we, how are we doing procedure-wise here? I'm in the, in the maze. Is any more procedure appropriate? Uh, no, just voting on the um, adoption of the resolution based on its merits as substituted. All right, well, then that's what we're going to do. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Legislation is adopted. Um, thanks for coming in, folks. I really appreciate it. I know it uh, takes some time out of the day that it's not very productive. Um, just uh, we'll see you uh, have, have, have happy holidays. We'll see you uh, on the 2nd of January. The council will reorganize. It's a Wednesday at 1 o'clock. And um, if anybody has any comments, I'm glad to entertain them. If not, uh, again, happy holidays.